name's Garrett Hart, and I work at Century Data Systems, and I've done a smidge of Ruby professionally, um, but mostly both of my experiences have been in Java, but I've been a long time fan, so to speak. So this isn't actually about programming, but it's about, um, I had tweeted some, I think, about uh, having a standing desk and having a walking desk, and it got suggested maybe I gave a presentation, and I can't read my notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll be, it, there's, it's not, uh, maybe I can turn them on later. Or something. Sorry. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is uh, warn you that um, I'm not giving you advice. I want you to make your own decisions about this. This is just what I did, and I'm not advising you to do anything. Uh, I'm not even saying that this is accurate. I'm saying that if you set up a standing desk, you might actually hurt yourself. A walking desk, you might almost certainly hurt yourself. And if you do anything like uh, assemble your uh, treadmills, I may suggest you suggest consider assembling your treadmill. You may actually hurt yourself again, and you will certainly void your warranty. And even with some of the desks I'm talking about, you'll almost certainly void your warranty. Okay. Okay. So why? Uh, I was. Uh, I spent, uh, my last job was eight years in cube land sitting in a very comfortable air on chair and I put on a ton of weight and uh, my knees were bad and my bad back was bad and um, I wasn't happy and uh, I believe this article came, I don't know, I can't remember how um, I heard about it but uh, this one came across my desk and um, I'm just, I'm going to actually for the next couple slides I'm going to read you a little bit because it'll just be uh, easier. To explore the association between sitting time and mortality, researchers led by Al Alpa Patel, PhD, analyzed survey responses from 123,000 folks uh, who had no history of cancer, heart attack, stroke, or emphysema, and other lung diseases enrolled in the American Cancer Society's Cancer Prevention II study in 1992. They examined the amount of time spent sitting and physical activity in relation to mortality between 1993 and 2006. They found that uh, the more leisure time spent sitting was associated with a higher risk of mortality, particularly in women. Women who reported more than six hours per day of sitting were 37% more likely to die during the time period studied uh, than those that sat fewer than three hours a day. Men who sat more than six hours a day were 18% more likely to die than those who sat um, uh, fewer than three hours a day. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the more important lines. The, associated, the association remained virtually unchanged after adjusting for physical levels of activity. So if somebody, if you had two people each sitting six hours a day and one of them went and say ran after work and the other one didn't, that didn't affect the mortality rates. So th this, is, this is something that appears to be independent of your physical activity that sitting alone is, 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 is causal. Okay. Um, when they did compare people who had the least amount of activity and, and the most, women and men both who both sat more and were less physically active were 94% and 48% more likely respectively to die compared to those who reported sitting at least the least and being the most active. Um, another article uh, that's got some good points in it is this one I'm going to read a little bit more. Uh, we average 8.9 hours a day sitting and if that's IT, I'm, I'm almost certain our average is higher than, than that. Uh, uh, from this article. In 2005 article, Science Magazine, James A. Levine, an obesity specialist at the Mayo Clinic, pinpointed why. Despite, why, despite similar diets, some people are fat. This is, he, he literally locked people into a room, measured their calories, and then he allowed them to have, then he would bump up their, their allowed um, intake. And um, we found that people with obesity have a natural predisposition to be attracted to the chair, and that's true even after obese people lose weight, he says. What fascinates me, uh, this is the guy talking, is that humans evolved over 1.5 million years entirely on the ability to walk and move. And literally 150 years ago, 90% of human endeavor was still agricultural. Uh, in that tiny speck of time, we become chair sentenced. Um, so, and then the next quote is about a little bit what, what may be going on in your body that may, be, may cause the, 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 the higher mortality rate. If you're standing around and puttering, uh, you recruit uh, specialized muscles designed for postural support that never tire, he said. This is um, Levine speaking. Uh, they're unique that the nervous system recruits them for low-intensity activity. They're very rich in enzymes. One enzyme, lipoprotein lipase, grabs fat and cholesterol from the blood, burning the, burning the fat into energy while shifting the cholesterol from LDL, the bad 
kind to HDL, the healthy kind. When you sit, the muscles are relaxed and enzyme activity drops by 90% to 95%, leaving fat to camp out in the bloodstream. Within a couple of hours sitting, um, the healthy cholesterol plummets by 20%. Uh, it goes on to talk about um, it's natural for your spine to be in an S shape versus the sort of C shape that chairs put us into and says that uh, lumbar support, uh, the court expert says lumbar support doesn't really help and implies a little bit that the, the chair industry is a little bit sinister. Um, I, put, I put this one in because uh, it had the sentence, um, it, has, it has some other good points, but uh, twice a second, 24 hours a day, the magic underwear's accelerometers and inclometers would assess every moment I made, movement I made, and I just thought that was funny, magic underwear, I like that. So um, next, so standing options. Um, the classic option is to do it yourself. This is kind of hard to see, but the guy literally took his desk, went and got stacks, reams of paper, stacked them up, and li lifted up his desk that way. Zero dollars spent. Uh, this, yeah, we're going to have to turn the line off now. I may have to ask you to selectively do that. Thanks. Okay, so this is, this is my old cube at Liberty Mutual, and all I did was ask the... This is, this is a half wall cube, it's not even that tall, and just ask the guy to put this section up higher for me. It worked out great. What you can't see is I have a uh, step bench right here that I use as sort of a bar rail. I found that gave me more positions and I like that. Um, so that, again, that's a zero cost option if you're in cube land and, and your, your company will let you do it. Many of the do-it-yourselfers for setting up their own standing desks go with IKEA. The, the classic one was called, a, it's discontinued, whatever, but for 119 bucks you can roll the dice and take a trip to Cincinnati and get one of these suckers or get it delivered and, 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 and experiment with a, a desk. What you would do is, you can't see in the picture, there's slots here that allow you to adjust this up and down instead of just having the shelves up here, you move this guy up here. Another model that's slightly wider. Okay, now we're gonna go to commercial standing products. This is something I purchased. Um, it's called the Ergotron and uh, its pluses are that it is relatively portable. So I happen to be lucky enough to have a job where I work at home now, but I worked you know, at an office for eight years. And if my current job ends up firing me and I still want a standing desk, I can lug this sucker and set it up and use an existing desk to, to, to work with. That's, that is one of its, it's a, that's another one of its pluses that it uses your sort of existing infrastructure to work with. Um, I feel it's a very, um, uh, quality made product, it's very sturdy, uh, it's quick to the, what not, may not be evident is the, the, the keyboard and the, you can set up the, the relative height of the keyboard to the monitor and you can slide it up and down together so when you do want to sit you just pull the chair up, slide her down and you can type for a while and you're good. Um, uh, the cons of it are, it's still pretty pricey. Uh, it's, I think it was 400 bucks. Uh, I want more space at my keyboard level. Um, you have to decide, uh, the, the, the mechanism for sliding up down is, is controlled with screws and there's springs in here, and so what matters is weight, so you, I believe you have to decide at the time you order um, whether you're gonna have one small monitor, one big monitor, or you can, have, you can have two monitors, you can have a monitor on one side, you can have a thing that holds your laptop up on the other side, so there's, there's, there's um, there's flexibility there, but you ha I think you have to decide at order time, and I think it costs a pretty substantial amount of jack to switch it from one model to the other. Okay, and that was, oh, it was, that's the one I ordered, it was 370 bucks. Uh, one of the more popular brands of, of standing desk is Geek Desk. Uh, so now the, the pluses are, basically all the pluses and cons switch. Um, more desktop area up here. Uh, it's less portable, obviously. It doesn't leverage, if you have an existing desk you like, it doesn't leverage that. You'd have to move that out or something like that. We're, we're spending more money. Um, we're talking about 800 bucks here. Uh, for them, with larger desk are, are like 900 to 1,000 bucks over there. Um, you don't have to think about, obviously, monitors here. As long as you can meet the, the weight requirement, you're cool. Um, you might get a funny haircut. Uh, what's up? <laughs> uh, there's one other thing I want to make about that. I'm going to say what it kind of looks like to you, too. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? 
Okay, so... You can't order that without a top, too, if you want to throw your oh, own. Oh, yes, good point. It saves, yeah. like, 200 bucks. That's true. Oh, I think... Um, oh, another option... There are other options. Uh, I don't know if Geek Desk makes them, but you can save some money by going with a hand crank. Um, instead of these have electric motors that get them up and down relatively quick. And if you want to go like Ben Franklin or get your Donald Rumsfeld style standing desk, they, they have like, got that out there too. And obviously, I think those are probably pretty pricey and they obviously don't adjust up or down. Those start at about 1600 bucks. Yeah, yeah. They look really good though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real nice. Yeah. So, um, walking desk options, you can again do, do a do it yourself. And there's sort of um, two schools here. This is the uh, modify your tre treadmill to accommodate your desk. And what this guy has done is he's, he's got a regular treadmill. He, I believe, he actually dremeled off parts of the uh, console. And he's just got the cable down here and put it on here. And he's, I think he's got a keyboard tray so it slides out. And this guy, I believe he was a graphic artist. I mean, he's got, he's got a tablet here, so he's walking and he's still doing drawing and graphic work. So then the other school of thought is um, just taking your existing treadmill, I'm sorry this is so dark, I wish that was better, but, uh, and modifying your desk to accommodate. Again, this is an Ikea. Um, somebody hacked in a hole for it, and, and, and they got that set up. So now we're moving to commercial options. This is, this thing takes, Existing treadmill, and these are these are two halves. They're, I think it's sort of like that plasticky stuff that's structural, and um, you stick them together over your treadmill. Uh, it's high adjustable here. I believe this guy was four hundred and fifty-ish dollars. This is a company called Tread Desk. Uh, they're kind of interesting in that um, they. In addition, so they sell they sell desks, they sell um, these treads here, and they also sell flooring that allow you to, for the purpose of raising your floor to the level of the tread, and then they you literally take your um, chair and roll it onto the tread when you want to sit. They sell a headless treadmill, and when I when I get into the stuff I bought, um, this is a little bit relevant that the, the sucker cost eight hundred twenty bucks. Um, it's nice. It's, you don't have to hack anything. You can just you got, you got it's meant to have this headless thing up on your desk that you can control. Um, there's no incline, uh, and it, it, I think this one only goes to uh, two miles an hour. And there, there's pluses and minuses to that. So um, about, it. but it's it's pretty pricey for what it is. This is another company that's actually out of uh, Indiana. I think they're up around Fort Wayne. But again, we're talking we're talking. Okay, so. Let me just, uh, the prices on the, the tread desk started, just their desk started like 1500 bucks, And then the, the actual treadmill itself we saw was um, 820 And the, the desk prices go up. This is uh, Signature out of Indiana. You can see that there's a combination. They're kind of nice. They take, um, the console actually slides out from underneath the desk. That's nice. Uh, I called them. You can, buy, you can buy the treadmill and the console separately if you don't want to buy it. Um, from the desk and the light to come up and, and pick it up yourself if you want to drive up to wherever they are in Indiana, but you're still going to pay sales tax. Um, this is their two models. You have to actually pay these. These are you have to pay an extra like 350 bucks to get this more powerful one. That has it has um, it has elevation and that one has manual elevation. Still pretty pricey. Okay, so my setup. I went with uh, this treadmill. Uh, it got decent reviews. Um, another model of it got, which was the same one. This is rebranding. Got much better reviews, but whatever. Five hundred bucks. Um, it has it had a better warranty than the, the headless uh, treadmills that were out there. It had. I still was going to have a, a tread. If I ended up not liking this, I could put it all back together and have an actual treadmill. Um, that is, if I didn't like using it with the desk. Um, and here's my actual setup, and here's here's the problem. So here's the 
I have my the console over here on my desk. That's my tread. And the problem is that I didn't. I thought a little bit about it, but I didn't think it would be that big a deal. Is my Ergotron work fit does not go up high enough to when I'm standing on the treadmill with it mounted on my desk and me elevated the treadmill. I'm a taller guy. I had to actually get my keyboard up. I went and bought some. I don't know, whatever that, something from Target to get it up there in one of those boxes that you put shoes in or something like that to get it set up. Um, I'm very, I'm comfortable with that now. Uh, but I think, uh, I don't, I don't, I may keep the Ergotron, I may, I think I'm, I'm leaning towards going and getting an actual desk that goes up and down. Okay, so my experiences so far with, with a standing desk, um, I started at my cube job. Um, the first, the first two days, I, I thought I was nuts. But it, it, everybody and their mother had made such a stink about me getting one. The, 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 the housekeeping guy came over and set it up, and everybody was asking me what I was doing. So it was like I had to do it, and I was, I was embarrassed. And, and I, I did too. And I got this socks on, and I kept going. And I, my air on was right behind me all the time, and I wanted to sit down on it. And but after the third day. I was like, oh, this, and I was, mad, I was mad at myself for being such a wuss, too. It was like, my gosh, man, you, you cannot stand for eight, eight hours without belly aching about it. So I, I got through that, and I got very comfortable, and what, what, what happened is, is um, my caffeine intake went down, because I didn't, my, my post-lunch lunch, lunch haze went down, because I just, I didn't have to, I, I just, I don't know why, it just, it felt better. Um, I was having a lot of knee trouble. And I actually thought that this was going to make my knee trouble worse, but I think it was just the position in them being like this for a long time. This is all anecdotal. This is my personal experience. I don't think this will happen for you. I don't know. Uh, I felt a lot better. Um, let's see. Uh, much less. I have uh, my back has been great since I started doing this. Uh, that's it. So then I went, uh, and then I went to uh, for my walking desk. I, um, again, it's it sucked focusing for a while, but I only go, I, I, I was trying to go like 1.5 miles an hour, but I'm down to, I do go one mile an hour at 4% incline, and according to my treadmill, that's um, 165 calories per mile. It doesn't have a weight, but it's a cheap, so I don't know, whatever, it may be higher or lower, but, but I average 4.5 miles a day, which tells you that you know, I'm not walking all the time. I do a fair amount of just standing too, particularly when I really, when I got to when I pissed off, I stopped walking because I'm like, I'm looking at the code, I can't believe it's not working, that kind of stuff. So 4.5 hours a day. So if I average that out, that's um, 742 calories a day. And for a five day week, it ends up being 3,700 something calories that don't end up on my ass. I have, I've lost, I've made some other lifestyle changes just because not being in the corporate world and going out to the, the buffets all the time and, and, and just sort of noshing at home versus the big meals. I've, I've lost, I was at 252 when I was at Liberty and I weighed in at 244 this, this morning, but, but it's not all due to the treadmill, but I think it's, it's helping a lot. Um, so just some odds and ends. Uh, I still sit. Uh, but mostly when I want to sit, I just, I'll go down and actually sit on the couch. It's much more comfortable to me than an office chair. Um, the prices for an Aeron chair are 738 bucks, so I think that gives you a little bit of perspective about when you're considering other things that looked, you know, quite pricey. Actually, with, you know, the next bubble that'll pop here in a bit, there'll be, like, a lot, a lot of them that don't buy from, so they don't matter. Um, <laughs> People that do have treadmills, when they do want to sit, um, often they'll use a very large exercise ball and put that on, on the treadmill and sit that way. Um, I recommend if you do the standing desk, the, the bar rail option with something to put your foot up on. Um, it can be dangerous for cats. <laughs> <laughs> Mine did not. I, I did turn it on when she was on there just to try to teach her a lesson. It just didn't accelerate fast enough to really <laughs> launch her. <laughs> um, let's see. I would have opted for a memory option on my treadmill because I had to kind of like punch in my settings too much. I would just like, boom, let's go. Um, if you're making your own walking desk, do make sure if you're getting one of those things that measure your hand height to where your feet are and then add in that treadmill and make sure your, your desk is going to come up high enough. That's going to be an issue if you don't, perhaps. Uh, you can save money on a Pomodoro timer because your treadmill will do that for you. And your desk 
in a situation where you could raise the dust itself? It's built in, it's uh, the previous owners built in a sort of a C shape into the, and it's, it's nice, and, I, and I'm, I'm probably going to blow it away. And, and then when I get to that point, I'm just going to get the whole dust that goes up. Uh, and I kind of wish, I kind of wish my treble, it's a normal size, but I wish it was wider, because sometimes I want to stand with my feet farther apart. And that's it. If anybody got any questions, I'll take them, or if anybody else has had experience. How do you uh, measure where you're comfortable with your hands? I mean, you would not want to be like that. Obviously. Correct. My hands, I have my hands flat like this. It's kind of like the rest of them. Yeah, and, and with a with an option like the work fit or the or any one of the adjustable desks, I mean the increments there that you you'll be able to experiment all day long about what makes you comfortable with that. Dave, did you have a question? Uh, you mentioned you when you it sounds like when you run into the tough coding problems that you actually stop. Yes. But do you ever find yourself like a lot of times I'll get into rhythm coding if I'm listening to music, but do you ever get into a rhythm just by you know taking steps or is that do you find it hard to do that? I definitely I definitely get into a mental and physical rhythm because often enough, so my treadmill stops at an hour and it'll surprise me um, every now and then that, oh crap I've been going for an hour or, or it's not a lot but I just slowly just plod along like that and it goes off so yeah I do get in so I do get into a groove um, one other thing I wanted to say was that the I think it'd be troublesome to do this in an office unless kind of everybody was doing it because the treadmill itself is not very loud. I think that'd be a, it's a low hum. It's I think it'd be very tolerable compared to other sort of office space noises. Um, I, I I've been I've been walking barefoot and the, the scuffing and I think shoes would do this too. The scuffing I think would drive somebody who wasn't doing it nuts. Um, when you first started standing and working, did you find it harder to focus on what you were doing, or was there was there an adjustment? A lot of it was being self-conscious about being in cube land and staying, I'm already tall, or ish, whatever, and uh, just sticking out. But I could see my manager coming, which was good. So, <laughs> so just in terms of your own, your own personal uh, interaction with your work, you didn't feel a, a really radical difference between standing and sitting. The, the the big difference would be the the, the post lunch haze and just. I just wasn't. I, ultimately, I wasn't as tired as I, I get. I would. I would have to. I would have to take more. I would be taking walking breaks that would get me away from my desk just to like wake myself up, go get some craptastic coffee, and go sit my fat ass back down in the air on. So I, I just. That would be the big change, I guess. Interaction. I, I found at the beginning when I was standing, it was it was a bit of a, a, a mind fuck because you're you're standing up like you're so used to sitting down, and coding. I was thinking about standing up and not thinking about what I was doing. Yeah. But once you get past that, I think it, it's just like anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying, I've just been testing it out, I guess, in the last month, and I went with the cheapest option possible. I found this like $50 adjustable desk and fries that mm -hmm. it can go many different ways, but I'm running, what I've had trouble getting used to is what you're talking about with the hands. How how to get comfortable with that and how they should be. And I even had, I, mine, you can go up and down with it, but then you can also make it go tilted, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had it kind of tilted back mm -hmm. so that I was over it like this instead of, you know, flat or, mm -hmm. or like that. But it still feels kind of weird to me. Do you use like a, well, you don't, you don't use I don't, I have water. nothing. My, the only thing that, my forearms don't touch anything. They, this, my hands are on, I, I use, I like, a centered um, trackpad, so I prefer to put sneak my laptop underneath there, and I just code right on my laptop. It's got it's a Mac, it's that machine right there. It's got a nice palm space and just just like that. Can you say how long you've been doing it? Uh, the, the standing desk I've been doing for probably I'm probably like six months to a year. I'm, I'm not good with that kind of stuff, but uh, I've, I've I've only been doing the walking desk for about um, four weeks, four or five weeks. And I've, I've been down this week because my AC's out and the whole house is, a, the upstairs is a, a sauna. So but, and I, I feel like, I feel, I feel sluggish. I don't, I don't like it. I'm ready to get back. I'll, I'll go up there and just to get, because I know I'm burning more calories too when it's that hot. So. Dave? I did. I, when I worked at home, I stood up for like six months. It felt great. And now I'm sitting again. 
in a cubicle, and now my back hurts. My shoulders hurt. That sucks. But I, 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 I just told totally just standing versus sitting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at a lot of, like, you know, the whole Pilates industry around tightening, and this is me just thinking, I'm not, I don't know if there's any, just about tightening your core. I mean, you, you've, just, you've just put it to rest by sitting in a chair. Yeah. And just a little bit of just keeping yourself upright is one, burning calories and, and keeping your tone. And I, I, think, I think it's just, it's just, I think a logical thing. That I, I like the quote about, you know, 100, not, what is it, 120 years ago, 90% of us were still, you know, working a plow. And the farmer sits some too, right? So it's just, we just have accelerated into the sitting position. And I don't think, and, and we'll evolve and everything to, to, to deal with it, but I don't think we're going to do it that fast. Well, the back thing doesn't, I mean, it doesn't surprise me too much because I just think about when I'm sitting, I constantly have to catch myself because I'll, you know, as I'm coding, I'm just leaning yeah. Further, yeah. further, further forward. Yeah. And then I'm like, man, this is horrible. Yeah. Like, my neck's all tightened yeah. up. But if you're standing, at least, I mean, it's kind of hard to even put yourself in that position that you're going to get into when you're sitting. It's pretty cool. Uh, I made a really ghetto standing desk a couple uh -huh. months ago. If you're playing games, your posture is much better. I don't know if you've ever had like a long Minecraft <laughs> thing, but you you stop that and you're like, oh god, I feel terrible because you've been sitting like this without moving and blinking for a long time. If you're standing, it's just like uh, you'll get a little dance on maybe. That's my favorite thing about the standing desk is if you have music and it's got a, a catchy beat, they'll just catch yourself. I do. Kinda, you know, I jump on your feet. <clears throat> Coworkers would tease me because they go, "You're listening to your old disco or something, aren't you?" <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm moving. I have not thought about it. So one other thing I, I do, I really want to warn you about, is so I have no side rails here, right? So um, I, I bumped it up the other day just to see, you know, what I was like, and I got. If I'd have fallen, I would have tore off my laptop, smashed it into the ground, cut my head open on this. I would have I've been racked up, okay? So it, it is, the, so the, I, was, I was saying that those other headless ones that maybe didn't go that fast weren't that great of a value, but they're in, inherently safer because they cannot go that fast. Does the stability feel all right on that? At one mile an hour, it's just, it's, it's, it's Well, I'm saying actually where your hand, because you've got it up on that thing, I didn't know if you I would prefer, I would prefer, to, and that's another plus about the, the going with the, um, the big whole desk coming up and down, mm -hmm. is there are times where I think I would like to get off the treadmill and even just like lean into my desk, something like that a little bit. I, I want that, I'm falling, I want to grab my freaking desk and not tear everything apart. Did you drink beer and coke while you're walking? <laughs> I, 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 I hear people talking about drinking and coke. I can't do it. I just I want to focus on my drinking when I'm drinking. <laughs> Sometimes it makes the coke work. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> For a couple hours. Yeah, you guys have seen that. Anything else? Yeah, a quick question. Yeah. Like, um, this kind of relates because I was looking in like uh, you know creating a scene or something like that in the past. And I looked at like they had the uh, multiple arm like. Uh, monitors, yes. holders, or whatever you put like up to four LCDs on there. And yeah. I was wondering, like, has anyone done more than two, like monitors? And, and if so, how do you do that from like hardware or software perspective? Just because like I would love to hook up four monitors in my laptop, and it'd be awesome. Like, you know. uh, um, my boss ran three, but he was using a, a well, I mean, he had two video cards with uh, two DVIs each, and he was running on Windows. But he, it was basically a tree that would come up, and then another kind of T-cross on that, and then adjusters for those three monitors. But you could potentially put six onto it and get one, two, three, one, two, three, four, yeah. okay. or I'm sure you grow up even higher. It's just how many video cards do you have and what supports it. He was using Windows. Yeah, yeah. us too. We got a USB video cards that work okay. great with the Mac. And so I heard that that has a lot of, uh, like I heard that has a lot of latency, like the USB ones or whatever. Do you find it to be a problem? No, no. Okay. Really? No, some yeah. of the really cheap ones are only go to a certain resolution, but okay. it doesn't matter if it does it, it does it, and play video on it, whatever. Yeah. Imagine you're not going to play Minecraft on it. That's kind of, that was the um, idea, you know, probably just have a, you know, extra terminal or whatever, yeah. browser or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, run, if I had like a flash video or something, run it on my primary one, whatever that was, and then, you know, the other yeah. ones would just be kind of tangential. Yeah, because if, uh, if you watch a flash video on a Mac, on a USB monitor and try to use the internal speakers, you're not going to be able to hear the video very well. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks, I appreciate that.
You guys, can I show you one little utility that I think is pretty cool? Yeah, I gotcha. You. Have you guys seen Divi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you haven't, it's it's this great little thing. So if you're, it's not such a big deal. Actually, it does come in handy as well. You 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 want to seek a couple things, and so we're just slow. Let's kill this freaking bird. Okay, just. <laughs> Gah! Gah! What is that keystroke? I keep freaking doing that. You can disable that if you go to like the uh, keyboard <laughs> oh settings or whatever. Yeah, I have that disabled. Because <laughs> I did that. It's like Windows Space or something. I'm frustrated. I'm not going to do it. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, yeah.